pages of notes. And I am ready. Okay. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Bitches in Business. Thank you for listening as always. Thank you. So I think we should just first start off by just talking about all the crazy weather that's going on. Wait, I want to say one thing before okay. we start. Sorry. Brittany is <gasps> free. Yes. Brittany is free. Brittany is free. Thank gosh. Did, Thank God. You must have seen the video that she put on Instagram last yes. night. Yeah. Talking about just all the different things she's excited to get yes. to experience, you know, having the keys to her own car and seeing money again. I mean, imagine going 15 years without touching money. She said that she, she gets to buy candles now. Yeah. Candles. Yeah, I know. Like the littlest thing that not like a new car no. or a new house or no. candles designer clothes. That's what she's been candles. wanting this whole time is candles. The bitch wants to go to Target. Okay, <laughs> that's all she wants to do. Okay, we all want to go to Target, honestly. Ugh. But like, I know. So I mean, amazing, great job for Brittany. That's it just goes to show you you have to advocate for yourself. Yes, you do, and fight for yourself, and it has all paid off for her. So good for her. Good job, Brittany. We're very excited for Yay. you. Allie was. A little emotional when she heard oh the news. Oh my god! I was on the ferry and I was crying like a little baby, and I looked like a fucking weirdo. But you know what? That's a really important emotional moment. So <laughs> I'll always know where I was when I found out Brittany was free. Exactly. <laughs> I remember you telling me. I'm, you you were the one that told me. I didn't read about it on social media yeah. or anything. Um, so yes, that's so awesome. Very very happy yes. about that. Um, we're also drinking hot toddies today. Hot toddies. Hot toddies. Hot toddies. And we're doing that because of the housewives, because yes. Erica always orders hot toddies. Uh, Erica, and then, you know, Rena has to follow suit. Obviously. Ooh, hot toddy. Ooh, that sounds good. Ooh, I'll have that. Yeah. Ooh, hot toddy. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing, by the way. Um, I've never had a hot toddy before, so I was no, pretty excited to. I was pretty excited to make one. So you essentially just start off with hot water. You pour in an ounce and a half of whiskey. We're using Jameson's today, and then you do a tablespoon of honey. Um, I only had about half a tablespoon, so I, I used agave syrup for the rest of it. And then um, two to three tablespoons of lemon juice, whatever you prefer. Throw in a lemon wheel and a cinnamon stick for garnish, and you got a hot toddy. It's delicious. It is really delicious. I'm not really a whiskey person. No, me either. Um, but you know the you the can't hot really water taste and, the whiskey. You really can't. It, so this is a really nice Christmas drink, middle of winter, rainy season, lovely drink. I've so heard this, it's good if you're sick too. I've heard that too. Well, I always used to drink hot water and lemon and honey when yeah. I was sick. So why not throw a little bit of whiskey in yeah. there? Why the hell not? Mm. Nice slurp. Thank you for that slurp. So yeah, I thought that was good. Um. Yeah, so it's just, you know, um, I would assume that most of our listeners are within BC, so I'm sure that you know all about the crazy yes. weather that's been going on. Um, really sad to see just the so many people that are affected by the floods and, uh, you know, losing their homes. Um, so many animals are affected by it. It's oh really God. bothering me. I can't even read it's about horrible. it. It's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah, so um, super, super sad for all of those people that have been affected, are still without power, still trapped in their cars, that kind of stuff. Trapped, um, like separated from yeah absolutely yeah and now vancouver is completely cut off from the rest of canada while yes. they try and fix the highways um we have family that was in whistler for the weekend and they had to actually go th into washington state and come through washington up into a soyuz in order to get back oh, into the interior do they have to take covid tests no the border actually allowed them to waive that as long as they had their passports like their their Canadian passports, they were okay to come into the states and oh. go back through the border they had crossing. Their passports with them when they went to Whistler. Uh, I, I guess so. That's lucky. I don't know. Maybe they were allowed to go without passports. Oh, I think they just had to show their driver's license. Like oh. they just had to show that they were from Kamloops, and so they allowed them to oh, enter wow. into Washington State That's and then so go back. Nice. I know. So um, yeah, there's a lot of people that are doing a lot of really great things right now to yeah. help out other people that are affected, which is awesome. We're really fortunate where we live in Nanaimo because we weren't really affected by it too too Not much. much, you know. So, but the Malahat is closed now at nighttime. Yes, BC Ferries is sailing twenty four hours a day across Mel Bay and Brentwood Bay. Yeah. Like it's just, it's nice to see the amount of response that we're getting so quickly. Yeah, right. And so many people are stepping up 
to, to help out Agreed. which Except is awesome for the panic buyers knock it yeah. off yeah i i still knock i really off. don't understand that i mean it's a, i guess it's just a human nature thing that people start to freak out and they get yeah. worried you know so there's places in chilliwack and even in, into the interior that are completely sold out of food yeah when you know in reality a lot of our food doesn't even come from bc you know no. like the roots throughout Washington, Oregon, California, those are all still yeah, open. You guys, most of our produce comes from like California, California and other places. So relax and we'll be fine. There's a lot of warehouses throughout Vancouver that do have a good amount of stock of yeah. stuff to replenish because it's not like the grocery stores get a truck in from California that morning. It no. goes to a warehouse first. So please do not panic buy. You know, it's go and buy what you need to sustain yourself for yeah. the next week or two. But there is going to be a solution. And always remember that there are other people that may need that food. Correct. So that's on that. Um, on that note, I'll kind of go into my next thing yes. about Save On. So I went to Save On today because our food drive started today. Right. And it's the last day of the case lot sale at Save On. Yes. So I wanted to take advantage of that so Good that idea. we can go and purchase some things to, um, you know, kind of start off, kick off our food drive. For other people, not for hoarding. Not for us. In, in no way, shape or form. So I went to Save On and I like piled my cart filled with all of this case lot oh God, stuff. People give you dirty looks. Um, I was prepared for that. I was prepared for somebody to say something to me, but nobody did. And if they did glare at me, I didn't see it. So no one said anything. <laughs> um, but so I, I'm in line and I go up to the till and I put all my stuff on the till. And I mean, it's it's not like I bought like all this stuff or all this like heavy things. I mean, it's the case lot sale. Well, the cashier was having a really hard time um, picking things up like she obviously maybe has bad wrists or bad hands or whatever right so she's having a really hard time picking up every single thing so I'm like on the back side of her till trying to help her so that as soon as she just like scans it I just grab it from her so she doesn't have to worry about it <laughs> so then she's like you know you should really be keeping your heavy items in your cart because I'm gonna have to go home after work and then my mother's gonna ask me oh what did you do at work today and she's gonna go I had a total workout at my job and I was like well I mean I'm like, sorry, I just I just figured you were going to have to scan it all anyways. And like my cart was overflowing with stuff. So I'd have to take it all out anyways. Yeah. And like they're like 10 pounds, like not even like they're not even that heavy. <laughs> <laughs> and so it took me, I'm not joking, 20 minutes to go through this line. And I had maybe 15 items <laughs> like it took forever. But all good i have all these things to donate to my food drive which is great for you thank you i'm gonna um talk about my experience today <laughs> at the same I already store told you. <laughs> but at this at the same store but the shitty location that i hate i hate that I just location i refuse get, to go I there i hate it um i just needed to get a lemon and cinnamon sticks for our drink that's it I had two things but two bulk items that require so weight. yeah i'm waiting in line at the express line and there's like so many people in the lineup but everyone else in the regular lineups is like panic buying so they have a million things yes so i'm not gonna wait behind them so the woman who's running the customer service <laughs> we just desk, assume they're panic buying <laughs> well <laughs> we don't know do you really need eight cases of bottles of water no don't think so anyway they should limit that stuff i'm sorry yeah. like they shouldn't allow you to do that i agree anyways sorry. anyways um so yeah the lady at the customer service desk is pulling people out of the express line to go through her till but she doesn't have a scale so she didn't pick me totally fine and then the guy who's stocking shelves next to us is like oh she didn't pick you because she doesn't have a scale and i'm like yeah yeah that's that's fine yeah, like i know i'm like yeah i know and the guy in front of me has like a cart or not or like a basket full of stuff and he turns around and he's like yeah yeah you only have two things I'm like i sure do wouldn't it be nice if you let yeah. me in front of you hello <laughs> let me in front of you what is wrong with people i always let people I go in front of me let people in front of me like it's two measly things that's all just two it's she's gonna punch a couple buttons and we're good I, i'm gonna tap my card yeah. it'll take you an extra 30 seconds it took less than that for me to go through the till i walked out i think before he did and exactly and that's the thing is like and you always get behind those people and then there's always a problem yeah. and it takes forever and it's like this would have been just nice if you just would have let me go i agree so mm -hmm. let's be nice people let's be nice and on that note um my food drive officially started today yes 
So Pack Ram is hosting a canned food drive, a non-perishable food drive, mm-hmm. and it's for the loaves and fishes. It starts today, November 17th, and it goes until December 15th. So all the proceeds will go towards loaves and fishes. They're going to come and pick up all of our food um, midway through December after our food drive is done. And our hope is, is that we can obviously help out a lot of families throughout the season. Um, food banks right now are empty. It's very hard for them to find food mm-hmm. in general. And then when you add in all of these crazy things like pandemics and the weather, um, they're going to see a huge need. So we're really, really hoping that we can provide them with, you know, an overflowing bin of food is what I would like to have. That would be so amazing. If you um, have the lovely thought of donating, that would be super helpful. Um, we are collecting donations at my office, which is at 1985 South Wellington Road. But I am more more than happy to go around and pick up food from you if it's too far to go out there you just don't have the time or whatever please send me a message I'm happy to stop by and pick up um, as well and there are I'll, I'll share something on our Instagram so you can see but there is kind of a list of things that are good to donate as well so please do that yeah also I made these really lovely flyers I made this by the way that these is lovely beautiful. flyers I'm very happy with it so if anybody has like a workplace bulletin board or something and they want to put up a flyer please let me know because I just think awareness is huge and the more people that see it then you have more opportunities to donate so that's my little plug great for loaves and fishes um okay so we do have quite a lot to talk about in this episode however i think a lot of this is real housewives talk Mm -hmm. so um i just want to get a couple things out of the way first yeah so that those people who don't watch real housewives can just stop listening okay so one thing i wanted to talk about was um the show botched on um hey you have you seen that show i have not because it really freaks me out but i know all about it and i mm-hmm. love dr terry debro and paul nassif right so so um adrian from um beverly hills she her she's not on the show anymore but her husband is on botch i've ex- never ex-husband sorry ex-husband thank you i've never watched the show either but i started watching some clips on tiktok and it's gotten me really interested it just i it freaks me out i just can't <laughs> So there's this one woman that went on there and she has lip filler and she Uh has 10 cc's of lip filler. Okay. Or 10 milligrams. I'm not sure what they... 10 milligrams sounds like a lot. It is a lot. (laughs) So it's so much so that like her lips are massive and they're stretching the skin so much that like it's causing problems. So... She went on there because she wanted a, another boob job. And so she wants a thousand cc's of boobs. Now, I don't know what that has any that reference to. That sounds like a lot. It's a lot. So it's so much that they specifically told her she's too skinny to undergo another surgery. Like they said, we're worried about putting you under anesthetic, uh-huh. first of all. And then just like stretching your skin that much and putting your body yeah. under that kind of stress. So she left there and got another doctor to do it somewhere else. And I found her on Instagram because all the comments in, on TikTok were like talking about going to see her Instagram. Oh so I guess this woman has um, I don't think it's a disorder or anything it's just she wants to look like a human a doll that is a disorder right it's like well it's like a it's like a body dis it's dysmorphia like body dysmorphia or whatever but right it's but not she doesn't ex- call it a disorder no. she just says this is how i want to look i'm happy with how i look and she has like she's changed and altered her jaw so much like she looks like a cartoon character i think i've seen this woman before very strange yeah so then it got me like diving i went into a huge spiral oh of God. these people that have been on botched and like these women that just have these huge boobs like to the point where it's like it's 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 funny looking like it doesn't even look normal no it's not it's, attractive it's not normal i don't understand well, it part of being a good plastic surgeon is talking people out of doing crazy things exactly and so that's what i like about this show is that they have you know many clips that i watch is of them saying we just don't feel comfortable with this mm-hmm. you know we we don't feel comfortable with going more we actually wish that you would do less yeah you know like can we do less and we've got to be more um healthy which I was really happy about because I didn't realize that that's what that show was about. Yes. So, yeah, I just thought that was kind of crazy. They so. also do um, like charity work for um, there's another show called like, like Botched, Pro Bono. Bo- Botched by Nature. OK. Which is people with like, um, you know, cleft bir- lips. Yeah. Or, yeah. And birth deformities and people who have been in like horrific accidents. Right. And then they they fix them. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. And they do do pro, pro bono for um 
people that have been botched right. by other doctors. That's as horrible. Well. Like I just feel bad for those people yep. that just that that's what they think that they need to do in order to be happy. Mm-hmm. But I guess if that's what if that's what makes you happy, then that's what makes you happy. Yeah, that and you that's know, fine. Just don't sure. go overboard. Yeah, and I mean don't and don't be dangerous. Like, you know, I think a lot of people end up going to different countries or different yeah. doctors that are mm-hmm. kind of under the table and don't have their license and that's yeah. scary. Yeah, that is scary. Yeah, so thought that was interesting. Mm-hmm. Got into a whole deep spiral about that. Yeah. Um also, yesterday I got a, I had a friend request from somebody on Facebook who I didn't know but we had a mutual friend okay. and a mutual friend that I was like, yeah, okay, sure. I maybe I've met this person before, I don't know. Uh-huh. So, I accepted and right away I got a Facebook message saying like, "Hey, how's it going?" and I'm like, "Hey, you know, I'm really sorry, but like have we met before?" And they're like, no, we haven't. It's just like, I saw that we have a mutual friend and I saw your post on a local business group. So I just kind of wanted to reach out. Okay. And I was like, cool. Okay. That's awesome. Like, you know, haha, thanks. Um, you know, what can I do for you? Kind of thing. Oh, you know, like I just wanted to see, um, I always love to connect with people with business. So I just was wondering if you're available for like a zoom call or a coffee so we can just like chat business and see how, Oh God, I know where this is Immediately I was like, "Mm." I don't really like know hey girl th- exactly yeah. right so this <laughs> is my thing so I looked on their profile and I can't <laughs> figure out like what business they actually are oh. with because it's not like part of their profile or that's anything that's interesting but I'm just like mm, I'm really sorry but like I'm just not interested in things like that like, and I don't want to be rude <laughs> Hey girl, want to be a boss babe and run your own business? Literally. <laughs> like it's like I'm sorry, but like I don't even have time to like call my friends back, you know? <laughs> like I just I can't. I can't get involved with things like that, but I don't want to be rude, but it's just not my thing. No. So simultaneously while this is happening, <laughs> I also get a uh, direct message request on Instagram and it's just like, hi. And I'm like, okay. So then I look and it's um, some of my friends follow this person. Okay. So I'm like, oh, that's weird. Okay. So I'm like, hey. And they're like, oh, you are a beauty couple. And I was like, (laughs) thanks. And they're like, oh, me and my wife are from Iran. Like we would be really interested in getting to know you and your husband. And I was like... (laughs) I'm like, thank you so much for the lovely gesture. I honestly really appreciate it, but I'm just not interested. And they were like, oh, thank you so much for like the honest words. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on at the exact same time? I'm like, what? Oh, wow. I'm throwing my phone away. Like, so thanks. Thanks. I, I guess I just like, no, I'm good. No one messages me stuff like that because everyone thinks I'm a bitch. (laughs) Maybe I need to start being meaner. I don't know. Um, Okay, the last thing I wanted to talk about was... um, Okay, I pay for balance protector premium on my credit card. Okay. So if I were to get, like, injured or I died, then I would have insurance to pay off the balance of my credit card. Right. Okay, so everyone's telling me I shouldn't be paying for this, and I just thought that I was, like doing something good because you never know what can happen. I could get injured tomorrow, right? And I could lose my job. You never know. Anyways, it it charges you 10% of your credit card balance every month, which when you have a credit card balance like mine is a lot. So I went to look at it to see like, do I really need this? And I realized that RBC offers something called a lifetime milestone achievement. Okay. Which I was like, that sounds cool like I play video games that's like a bonus in a video game that sounds interesting what's that okay so for every lifetime milestone that you have like you have a baby you retire from your job you pay off your mortgage you get married you buy a house they will pay 10% of your credit card bill off up to an amount of like 20 grand say holy right that's amazing. So, yeah. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. Well, you've, so, gone, you've done two of those I've things. done two of those. So they will only do two in a 12-month period, which is fine. So I called and I was just asked about it. And he's like, yeah, just call the insurance company. Here's their phone number. And just they'll process the whole thing. I'm like, okay, great. So I called. The lady who I spoke to was so nice. And she was asking me all about like the wedding and the house and how are things going, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, yeah, here's the website you go to. You just file a claim online. Um, she said, don't do two milestones on one. Just do one first. Wait for it to get uh, approved and then do your next one. She's like, it's really easy. Doesn't take 
you know, more than a couple of days. And she's like, you know, congratulations. That's really awesome. I'm like, that's so cool. So I filed my first claim yesterday and I'm just waiting to see how it goes. But oh. like, what a neat thing. That's really cool. I did not know that. Me neither. And I think when you think about it, it's like it's using your money for you, right? Because I've had this balance protector premium for probably a year. So, I mean, I've paid enough money into it by now that mm-hmm. like they're really just using my money for something. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, once I pay off my credit card balance, it's not like I get that money back. No. You know, so that's kind of cool. What a neat thing. Thing yeah that I had no idea of I just looked into it hmm. so you know look into like your insurance on your cards and all the different things of what you get because you just might have a benefit like that yeah that's so, cool I know I thought that was pretty cool okay that's all I got do you got anything else before no. we dive into like the big thing all right no okay so the latest episode of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City was on Sunday oh, was I've already watched it three times I watched it, it twice it only it came out two days ago incredible so I took four pages of notes, front and back, um, because there's just front a lot. Front and back. Front and back. <laughs> That's why I said that. Uh, as I drink out of my uh, Central Perk <laughs> mug. Um, there's just a lot that happens, and I didn't want to miss anything. So first of all, the episode opens up, and it's continuation of last week, and they're in the bus mm-hmm. waiting to go to Vail. Yes. And Jen has, or sorry, the feds and everybody have just shown up, and they're all still kind of reeling about what happened. So, first of all, I think it's really funny how they make keep making comments about how, oh, Whitney knows so much about this. <laughs> Whitney knows so much about laundering money and about what Jen does. But, like, anybody who knows anything about marketing... Those are very common knowledge yes. things, you know. Um, I will say, um, apparently, um, uh, Whitney's husband had a legal lead generation business, and that's oh, why okay. she knows these things. Well, that but makes sense. Also, he's being investigated allegedly. Oh, I didn't know that. That's really interesting to or know. He, I don't know. I mean, I don't know much about lead generation in the sense of purchasing it from other companies mm-hmm. because, like, we've never done anything like that. Right. But we do get. Um, uh, approached by a lot of companies that you know are interested in helping us with that it's just not something that get, we're interested in doing as a realtor i get an email like I can, that every day i can every imagine. single day i can imagine yep. so i don't really know um how to tell the difference between a legal one and an illegal right. one um but if you are like in the marketing business or you you are invested in marketing for your business it's very common knowledge on how that stuff works yeah. so i just think it's kind of funny that they keep like well, it's Lisa that keeps making comments about how, oh, how does Whitney know this? Yes. She's trying to deflect from herself. Correct. The other thing I will say is I watched watch What Happens Live and Heather was on it with Michael Rappaport. Okay. Oh, hilarious. Who is Michael Rappaport? He's a, he's a stand-up comedian and an actor. He's like... um He's got, the, like, the New York accent. He's, like, ginger, kind of. Okay, I'd probably recognize he him would, if I looked him up. He's a big, big Housewives I fan. I recognize his name, so... Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Heather... Heather Gay and Michael Rappaport mm-hmm. were on and somebody asked why did Whitney know all this stuff and Whitney just said everyone thinks that Whitney is so dumb because she's so pretty but she's really really smart yeah I mean she seems very smart about business yeah. for sure so yeah I mean I just think it's funny when anyone kind of thinks that anybody wouldn't know about things like that because how do you know you know how exactly. Jenny's like oh has Whitney been studying this no no like, it's just it's called Google everyone does think Whitney's dumb because she talks like this <laughs> and she sounds kind of dumb she does a little bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> um well and then it's just kind of funny how like Whitney makes a comment about how Lisa was acting guilty right and I mean yeah calling all of your attorneys right away <laughs> okay asking really specific questions about you know should I be stressed like is something <laughs> bigger going on like should I be concerned and it's like you're behaving very panicked for no reason and maybe that's just your way of dealing with the situation but if it had nothing to do with me I would just be like oh that's really interesting I wonder what's going on I wouldn't be calling all of my attorneys no, maybe call one and be like hey do you know what's going on yeah, like I just just is there information exactly sake. is there anything that you know that the general public doesn't know yet sure but I've called all six of my attorneys and they're all <laughs> calling me back right now. So, <laughs> so I saw a montage. I think it was on Watch What Happens Live also of like her reaction talking to each attorney. And it was just <laughs> so that's funny. funny. <laughs> yeah, I just that was like a real a, a bit much. Um, I realized that 
you know, I've said this before about how it just Heather's response kind of seemed weird. But after watching this episode, she really just had like no clue about kind of what's going on. Yeah. You know, I mean, her saying, I just really hope this is like a paperwork issue and that this will all be sorted out. Right. Like, I'm sorry, Heather, but like a paperwork issue would not be handled not like a, that. A SWAT team doesn't you would not come. get that kind of response no, no, no. at all. No. You know, a paperwork issue is kind of like a hi, we've sent you a lot of letters and, you know, like yeah. they wouldn't be sending the they feds after you. They don't send a SWAT team for a paperwork. <sighs> work issue and then I love that when they find out that Jen has been arrested Lisa kept being like I just feel so bad like I just feel so bad yeah but like and she's crying like she's crying about the whole thing which I just think is weird like don't you think like if I found out that you had been doing that yeah like I guess I'd feel bad but I also would kind of be like wow I completely misjudged who you are like I'm mad yeah like I'm like what how did I how did I get this so wrong I would be crying totally I don't know the thing is like do you feel bad for her kids I feel bad for her kids Mm -hmm. the scene with her kids coming out of the house that was so sad totally this some man has a a machine gun yeah pointed at your doorbell and he's taking a 15 year old kid out of your house like that's and looking for your mom absolutely that that would be absolutely traumatizing and I do feel bad for her kids 100% I feel bad for her kids and I'm sure for her husband because if he is not being named in any of these allegations then obviously that means that he didn't know about it yes oh and one more thing I will say about um about Sharif so um Andy on watch what happens live Mm -hmm. said why do you think that um Sharif is not under the same scrutiny as Erica was. Why are they not saying, did Sharif know? Did Sharif know? And they are a little bit. And Heather said, well, that's because there's a war against women in this country, which is true. However, Hmm. Sharif wasn't going around town waving Jen's money around, buying designer things. Like, he's a low-key guy. That's true. Totally different situation. 100%. And you wouldn't believe that he would have any, that he would know anything about it. Anyways, and he wasn't there a lot. No. So that's a very good point. I never really thought about that, yeah. actually. Side note, I saw a TikTok yesterday of a girl that I don't know where Erica was coming out of, but a girl was waiting for her when she came out. Oh, and she I was, could not see where she was like asking her questions. Yes. And she's like, um, like, when are you are you ever going to date another lawyer? Yeah. And like Erica just started killing herself yeah. laughing. No, maybe for free legal advice. Yeah, I thought that was really cute. <laughs> I thought that was a really nice, like genuine kind of video. Yeah, from her, she seemed but, um, like to be very um, nice. Totally. Um, I also thought it was funny that the girls were talking about like, do you think she's going to go to jail? How would she not go to jail? Like if this many law enforcement groups are looking for her, she had to have done something that was big enough for her to go to jail. A hundred percent. You know, what are you talking about? It's just so funny how it just they just kind of seem like very unaware of like how the world works in a way. Like I would see that and go, well, of course she's going to jail. Yeah. You know? Like, that wouldn't even be a doubt in my mind. But I don't know. Um, <laughs> I also thought it was funny how Jenny's like, you guys are freaking out over one article. Like, we we don't even know exactly what's <laughs> happened yet. You know, like, you're making a whole lot of assumptions. But of course, that's what you're going to do when it's one of your close friends, yeah. you know. And obviously, the women, some of the women know more than what they're letting on. You can tell just by what they're Lisa. saying. 100% Lisa. Lisa knows a lot more. Um, a hundred percent. Oh my god, did you just die when she's talking to John and John's like, "Oh, by the way, I texted Sharif after I talked to you." Yeah, I oh, know. Oh, did you? Did you? Did he text you back? No. No. I know why the, the fuck why did would you, you say why anything? Did you even why would it you then? say anything? I know because the way he said it was like a. Oh, by the way, like I know oh, yeah, some like, information. Oh, I spoke to Sharif. No, exactly. No. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks for letting me know. Um. Okay, so then it goes to Meredith and she's in the house. And so Lisa oh Lisa God. is very like, oh, I just, I, we just need to call Meredith and like let her know. Okay, so they show Meredith. She's already arrived at the house and she still has her boots on while she's like walking around the house, which I just think is weird because like that would be one of the first things I would do after like arriving to my vacation home. Like I'm going to start unpacking and yeah. shit, right? Then she's like, they're like, oh, have you been watching the news? And she's like, no. No. Like, I'm sorry, Meredith. People would be calling and texting you. <laughs> yes. Like, you would definitely be like knowing Brooks what's going on. called you? Come on. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> your friends, your coworkers, whoever, they are calling you and telling you what's going on. Yes. 
Also, I get like, you know, they're also shocked that Meredith isn't surprised by this. But if you've been questioning it and concerned about something for that long, you've obviously like looked into enough stuff to be sure that, you know, something's obviously not right. So it wouldn't be that surprising. You know, in the next episode, she says that she hired a private investigator. Exactly. I forgot about that. Mm hmm. I thought it was also interesting how Meredith said, you know, nobody wanted to listen to me. Nobody wanted to believe me. So I'm not really super surprised. She didn't say anything about criminal stuff. She's just said that Jen is like not a good person or whatever. Which is just kind of shady. It's true. Well, it's just kind of it's just as interesting. It goes to show you how much Lisa is just not aware of what's going on or obviously doesn't listen because she's just like completely seems really flabbergasted by the whole thing where some of the other women are like yeah I'm not surprised yeah. Jen seems a little unsavory and like it doesn't all make sense no. and Lisa kept being like really what do you mean like really and it's like well how does it how does it not make how does it make sense to you yeah you know Winnie um, just thought she had a sugar daddy yeah which is <laughs> so funny that she said that <laughs> um, I also thought it was interesting how they talked about how Jen keeps opening up companies and right. how that's a way to launder money and right. I didn't really recognize didn't that know. Jen was doing that so it does make perfect sense that that's what she's doing and I wonder if tax evasion will become part of the charges eventually if they can find that as part of their oh, investigation probably. you'd assume that um, I also love when Lisa goes talking about Whitney about how Whitney is playing Nancy Drew and Lisa goes Jen is not in the library with the lead list well Actually, she is. <laughs> like, that's exactly. She has the lead list. I just want to be in the lounge with a bottle of Vita. Oh Vita God. tequila. She plugs Vita <laughs> so much. It's so funny. Um, yeah, and then I love how Lisa's like, well, I don't know if that's it. Like, I don't know if that's it. When they're talking about, like, what her charges would be and like what's going on well what else would it be yeah, well you don't why know why else would she be getting arrested don't all of these things start to add up don't you start to be like oh light bulb <laughs> <laughs> there's one there's one okay then we get to mary showing up in veil I knew, and so did Allie, that Mary was going to have <laughs> something to say about the fact that Meredith wasn't standing by the front door oh, with a plate of appetizers there to greet her. So Mary, of course, is all but hurt that that Meredith wasn't down by the front door, that she was sitting in a bath, and that she, it wasn't proper of her to greet her guests like that. Also, she says, etiquette. Etiquette. Who yes. says etiquette? You can't talk about somebody else's etiquette if you can't even you say can't it even right. Say <laughs> you can't even say etiquette. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. And, like, I wanted to have a bath. Fucking excuse me. It's a girl's trip. Who yeah. cares? And we I don't like even know the, the, the timeline either. I like that she was using Heather's bathroom. I know. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> Just like, Mary, pull the jewel encrusted stick out of your ass and let's like move on, you know? Uh, I also love when Meredith was telling Mary about what happened and then Mary's like, <laughs> <laughs> shut the front door (laughs) like i'm sorry that was the most delayed response ever and it doesn't seem Uh, real like your response doesn't seem real all i have to say about that is she's probably just shitting her pants because she's next well you might be right about her whole cult weird church thing She's yeah. like a cartoon character. I'm sorry. I just, she's bizarre. I know. Well, um, I think it was on the scenes from next episode. Lisa says that Cameron mortgaged his house and gave Mary $300,000. What? Oh, I missed that. Oh, that's interesting. I think the next episode is going to be the crazy one. I don't understand these whole churches that like require you to pay every month. No. It's very strange. I don't get it. Um, so then Mary said, or sorry, Meredith and Mary were talking about just kind of how they saw what happened. And Mary's like, you know, why would the feds be there? And obviously something had to have been going on for a long time. And right. Meredith said, well, unless there was an insider within her organization, which to me makes the most sense. Yeah. Because if the feds start finding out or whoever at some point a jurisdiction starts to find out that there is illegal business happening mm-hmm. and they start to investigate and develop that, you know, this is a much bigger organization. Or, or practice than what we think then that would be a likely scenario that they would do is put an insider in so that they can actually get hard evidence because yes. they can't act until they have it. I've heard that that 
is the case. And also, by the way, when Lisa was like, um, only seven people in our families knew that we were here. Like, no, that is not true. Oh, I think I every had that single on here person too. in the production company knew that you were there, and probably all of their families, and also like Bravo head office. Everybody knew that you guys were there. Okay, so first of all, like, yeah, so. Heather's company, anybody who works in Beauty Lab likely would because they likely knew that they were leaving from yeah. there or doing that that day. Bravo, all the producers, you know, anybody that works in Jen's organization, she has eight assistants. There's literally hundreds of people, of people that, that would pro- know that knew that they were there. So exactly. like Lisa, just shut up. Yeah, I, I thought that that was really silly, too, because all she's trying to do is manipulate the whole situation. She's trying to point fingers away from herself. Exactly. And then she calls John and right away she goes, I think Meredith had something to do with this. Why would you think? Why would you say that? Where is that coming from? Oh, because of other stuff. So obviously there's things happening that we don't know about, but well, maybe she knows that um, Jen stole from the store. Well, no, not only that, but she maybe she knows that Meredith hired a private investigator. Maybe that too. Then that's. But either way, even if let's just say Meredith tipped off the feds, let's just say that they don't just act off of a tip and then arrest somebody. No. They act off of a tip they and investigate. then they investigate. And if they don't have hard evidence, then they have to go further. You know, it's a it's a long investigation. Yeah, but. P.S. When Teresa Judice went to jail, she also blamed her castmates for ratting on her. Yeah, that makes sense. But so. why would Meredith tip off the feds and then be like, oh, it had to have been an insider? Don't you think you'd be like, hmm, yeah, that's so weird. I don't know. Why would you put it out there? She just the things that Meredith is saying implies that she doesn't know and because she also kept saying like maybe she's not guilty maybe this is all just a big mistake i don't know i don't think that meredith did it because i I don't think she did either if meredith if meredith knew something and they said that jen was arrested i would think that her reaction would have been like crazy over the top like what exactly oh my god and that is so shocking exactly and i also (laughs) think she'd be saying things like oh well It's her own fault. You know, shouldn't have done that. Like, she gets what she deserves. Like, you wouldn't be saying things like, you know, maybe she is innocent. I don't really know. Do I believe it? You know, you can tell by the body language and just what people are saying. Yeah. Um, I do think it's funny that Meredith was still in the bath when the other ladies showed up at the house. How long was that bath? Well, that's what I want to know. That was a choice. It was a choice. 100% it was a choice. And when Heather was like, you know, I kind of figured that she'd be watching TV or like yeah. glued to the news, which I agree with that. If it was one of my friends, even if it wasn't a close friend, even if it was just an acquaintance that I had seen multiple a times, co-worker. sure, a coworker, I would, I would still be glued to the TV. Even of in the course. bath, I'd have my phone out watching it, even yes. if I wanted to have a bath. That was a, that was kind of weird. Very strong choice. hundred percent. And I think it's also kind of weird to have a bath when you're, you know that your friends are arriving yes. like like that wouldn't be my first thing that I would do when no. I was getting to a house that we're all doing a vacation rental in I would be like unpacking you know getting things ready to go for the night whatever yeah I wouldn't go and have a bath right away no. so maybe she just I don't know maybe she didn't know when the girls were she arriving just wanted to look casual you know it's like see but maybe she was trying to deflect from the whole thing I don't know yeah it's very it's, very strange it's bizarre um, so the story that Meredith talked about about a clutch being stolen from yes. her business, I also had no idea about that until she talked about that. Yeah. So um, Jen was in the store after hours, it sounds like. Yes. And one of her employees or her friends, her employee, her employee, stole a clutch and they saw that on the security cameras and then he had to return it the next day. Yes. I do agree with Meredith that I would be upset if my friend employee stole something from my business yeah. and then my friend did not fire that person oh, totally so it keeps them employed as if it doesn't make any difference well if you're stealing millions, millions of, dollars, of dollars then what's what the, one more clutch exactly what does a clutch matter see but that just really goes to show the way that jen thinks about that kind of stuff yeah. because i mean that would really hurt me yeah you know and then it just shows that you don't care about my business in any way yeah so i don't blame meredith for starting to think like 
something else is going on here did none like, of this makes sense did you like lisa's takeaway from that story oh yeah i love those they're beautiful i have a few of those yeah those are great <laughs> and then talking about getting red flagged at louis vuitton and how she's yeah. like the feds can come through my door as long as i don't get red flagged from louis vuitton <laughs> <laughs> like oh my god or taco bell or taco bell. yeah exactly <laughs> that's kind of a big deal though to get red flagged at louis vuitton for always paying in cash because i mean like those are pretty pricey items so that means and i'm sure that they do see people come in to pay with cash regardless well i wonder if they have to fin track people or their version of fin track must they must have to yeah they must have to so i wonder it maybe is it's a probably a higher threshold though because our threshold is 10 grand but it's probably a higher threshold maybe for like certain retail industries like yeah. luxury well, items I don't know or whatever what the threshold is in the states no i, I don't, don't know, know either but i would assume that they have a lot of people paying cash regardless but i wonder if they have a certain amount that kind of flags them on which is and you know what that could have been the thing that led the feds to finding Jen. Who knows? I also didn't realize that um, Jen's headquarters was in New York. Yes. And so that's why New that's York was why involved. That's why NYPD. Yeah, which makes sense. So, I mean, yeah, when you start putting everything together, it does add up. Um, Heather's story about Jen taking the Uber, I thought was also really interesting. <laughs> so Heather mentions yes. how she put Jen in an Uber and then Heather checked the like uber drive and jen got out in the middle of an intersection halfway through the trip mm-hmm. and then lisa starts talking about how well what day was that was that what that time was, was so that weird and then lisa's like oh well um like i was just wondering and the girls are like well why yeah. why are you asking and she's and like did something happen and lisa goes well not to me not to me yeah and then she wanted to know if if jen was meeting up with somebody so like that's weird like what another guy lisa obviously knows something oh definitely it, like it's got to be more than just like oh she was cheating It'll no it's out. something else it's i'm very very intrigued and by the way if jen was cheating or had a sugar daddy like that's a lot of things and good luck trying to hide that from Sharif. So that's not it. Exactly. <laughs> and I just hate when people do that where they come out and they start to say something and then they're like, oh, I don't want to talk about it. Well, you already did. You already you did. Already, you made the choice to say what you said. You may as well just keep going now because everyone knows that you have something to say. So yeah. it almost doesn't even matter if you say it or not because it's already implied. So just come out and say it. Mm-hmm it was a crazy episode a lot happened yeah a lot happened and you know what i just thought of this i bet you because like lisa seems to really be like pulling along this whole like mary storyline of like mary's church right. and investigating into that she i think she probably had no idea that this jen stuff was going on because she was too focused on something else yeah well it's like it's not we're, we're yeah. investigating Jen right now mm-hmm. not Mary that's true but and it might all come out yeah. next season who knows yeah it's yeah. um there's a lot that's happened on the show already in the two seasons that we've had and I'm intrigued to see what happens with Jen because I do really hope that she gets what she deserves you know yeah I mean that's horrible to take advantage of elderly people and just yeah. people that are vulnerable and and don't understand mm-hmm and then and then hide the whole thing buy all of this stuff flaunt all these things like the fact that hold on sorry the i don't know if it's still recording i'm sure that it is but oh, oh yeah it is good. um <laughs> my battery is just was warning me um then to have these like big huge elaborate birthday parties like 80 grand on a birthday party for meredith and to throw away a seventy thousand dollar tennis bracelet that's ridiculous ridiculous yeah so i mean if it's so great so you're stealing money and then you're really not trying to hide it like no. so you don't even care that that's what you're doing why are you on a tv show yeah the whole thing is very strange and i also thought it was strange how next week's episode she goes like how is this happening i don't understand why this is happening but i don't know what that's in reference to but i really hope she doesn't play the whole like i have no idea why they would think that she is it's disgusting i don't get it no did you watch the bachelorette last night uh yes i did um so spoiler alert if no one's watched it yet but (laughs) when 
she's on the date with Nate and they're sitting there having dinner and then Chris S is like <laughs> spiraling in his brain about how upset he is and then he goes to get in the car I'm like N- shut the fuck up yeah are you really he's, he's gonna go and interrupt an their date and then he, I've never seen that before ever no. that's insane just to be like I have something to say I just really need to talk to you <laughs> But I, you know what? I'm glad that he didn't like lose his mind when he was talking to her and be like, you know, I did this for you and get all aggressive. Uh, I'm yeah. glad that he just yeah, like listened to what she had to say. But like, what an idiot. How You really thought that that was going to go differently? <laughs> I mean, it just blows my mind how every season there's always a person that just is so focused on, you know, the other guys in the house. Like they just don't know what's right for you. And like, they're just not treating you right. And you need to pick me instead. That is not the way to do that. No, no. And then to ruin someone else's date because of it. Oh, my God. What an idiot. And I really liked him because he looks so much like Jeremy oh, that I, I liked him. But him. I didn't like him as a person. I just thought he was attractive because he reminds me of Jeremy. But like other than that, idiot. 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 <laughs> it was an OK episode. I'm just kind of like, who do you think's going to who do you think's going to win? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Okay, final, final three, final three. Joe, obviously. Nate, obviously. And oh man, we think maybe Rick or she loves Rick. She's really into Rick because he he he's giving himself. He's yeah. opening up. He's giving so much emotion. I don't get it. Like I'm I don't, just, I don't I find don't, him attractive no, at all. I think I it's just kind of I, I don't know. I don't get, get it. it. But whatever. If I were her, I would pick Clayton, but that's just me. Yeah, Clayton is attractive, but he's not my thing. I like him. He just looks like a like a big, just dumb football player. <laughs> that's what I like. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he's, he's not a bad looking guy by any means, and he seems very sweet, and he obviously yeah. really likes Michelle, because when you look at the scenes for next week, he's like very emotional, yeah. which is great. Um, I thought it was interesting, though. I... I need to rewatch it because Melanie and I were talking so much mm. and because I don't have cable, we had to watch it live. And so I need to rewatch it because I didn't see what Martin said to Michelle at the very end. They were having the cocktail party oh, before the so roast. Stupid. What did he say? I don't even know. He was saying and like, oh God, I don't I need remember to it, it like word for word, but he was talking about how like girls are high maintenance because they expect to be like taken care of. Right. And she, she was like, well what about guys what about when guys are high maintenance and he's like well it's just different and he just came off okay. as so chauvinistic that i was like oh he's not getting a rose well and he was and like he did. i know and i i think she to be honest i don't think she made that choice i bet you the producers maybe. did maybe 100 percent. because like but i don't know i mean she's had she's had a couple of dates with him where she obviously likes him but this is the second that was time the fir- now yeah. that she has been like ooh I don't know how I feel about yeah, that I, I didn't like that and he says he's like I think that there was misunderstanding on her part like yeah, I don't think she understood like a- what I said but that's the second time that that's happened because when they were on their car date same kind of thing she asked him you know what were your thoughts on me sending Jamie home and what did you think about that right. do you think I made the right decision and he kind of like made her feel like she's like she's not supporting the choice that I made and I don't know if I agree with that you know and so now this is the second time that he's kind of going against what she believes in I think so he's not gonna last long no I honestly think it's really just for TV that he's still there but he's not that good of TV no he's not no. but it's drama and that's the whole reason why they keep a lot mm-hmm. of these guys is the drama so I was happy that they sent Leroy home I don't think I heard one no, word from him no he didn't him. do anything no, no nothing on dates nothing no. It's just kind of funny how like it's kind of like Survivor. This always happens on Survivor where you get to kind of some of the last few episodes and you're like, who is that? Yes. Like, how have you made it this far under the radar? Yeah, <laughs> like, that's so true. It's good. I think Joe will definitely be in the final three. Yes. Um, Nate, for sure. And then I'm kind of between like Rodney and yeah. Nick. She seems to really be in, or sorry, Who's Rick. Nick? Oh, Rick, Rick, Rick. Sorry, Rick. <laughs> Who's Nick? <laughs> sorry, Rick. I don't know why she likes Rodney. Like he's cute and he's like very sure. sweet, but like he is very sweet. Eh. I don't get it. No, 
Yeah, I don't get it. But I mean, whatever. I thought it was kind of cute, though, when her and Rick like walked outside of the building and then like went to go walk down the sidewalk and there was that piano there and they just started like dancing. I'm like, well, that's kind of that like, was sweet. I like that, that. that happened. Yeah, it's very it, like coincidental, spontaneous. Yeah, I liked that. So I like that. We were also talking about how Mel- Melanie and I watched the episode last night. So um, we were talking about how Joe almost kind of gets it a bit more points in a way because he's from Minneapolis. Yeah. It's Minneapolis that they're at, right? Or Minnesota. Minneapolis. Right, okay. Is in Minnesota. Thank you. Yes. I just couldn't remember if they were both from Minnesota or from Minneapolis. Uh, oh, that's a good question. Because uh, I think they're both from Minnesota, but I don't know both if they're both from the same city. Right. Either way... You kind of almost like have a big a bigger bond with somebody who is from where you're from because it's they they get it like yeah. they get the people they've probably been to a lot of the same places like it's easy for you to be like oh yeah I used to like go to this summer camp as a kid and you'd be like oh yeah I have a friend that went to that summer camp yeah, too plus like I don't she doesn't <clears throat> seem like the type who's gonna like move, move somewhere move else to L A no or like you know live the bachelorette life hundred percent like she's a teacher and she wants to be a teacher so she's probably gonna want to stay in Minnesota and her, and her family's there like she yeah. seems very close to her family so I know it almost kind of works out for her easier well and she asked Rick like would you move here so obviously that means that she's not really interested she, in moving yeah, somewhere else yeah right so I think it's kind of like lucky for Joe and the fact that they had already talked to each other prior to the mm-hmm. show you already already have did I just say already already yeah <laughs> have a bond with that person <laughs> um it was the same with pete's um season two he had met kelly that yeah. one time in the lobby of that hotel and you but you have that connection with somebody mm-hmm. and it's hard to beat that sometimes yeah. and you have to question did that happen for a reason you know is it cosmic fate what my yeah. phone's blowing up just what for could no possibly reason be happening oh my mom's being uh Yes. Lovely. Get that. She's being amazing. For sure. Needing everything right now. Well, I mean, we're going on a 15 one. 15 one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even like the hot toddy is not even hitting me that much. And apparently I'm having a hard time. We're going on 51 minutes. So, I mean, we could wrap it up if we really wanted to. Is there anything else you want to talk about? I mean, not really. Those were kind of all my notes. Okay. I'm, so I'm good. I'm fine. Um, uh, let's see. I have my dad's celebration of life this weekend, yes. which I'm excited for. So we have uh, my nanny made me this really, really nice quilt with a bunch of his Aww. T-shirts, which is cool. And then we're just going to have a whole bunch of stuff set up like his skates and photos and music and all that kind of stuff. That's very so nice. excited about that. Um, but other than that, I'm going to decorate for Christmas on Sunday. Mm. That's all I got. Cool. I know. All right. Well, I guess we'll see you next week. See you next week. Thanks for listening and follow us at Bitches and Business on Instagram, TikTok, and that's it. YouTube. Oh, and YouTube. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. Okay. Bye. Bye. The hot toddy got cold. Yeah. It's cold toddy now.